Welcome to the Credit Suisse Monthly Economic Outlook. In the midst of Europe's increasing economic woes, discussions surrounding Eurozone bonds have underscored the division, hindering efforts to coordinate a response to the crisis. With us today to discuss this controversial topic is Joe Prendergast, Head of Currency and Commodity Strategy and a member of the Global Economics and Strategy Group, the so-called GESG. Joe, what's your take on common euro bonds? Are they the right approach to resolving Europe's problems? Well, I think theoretically a common issuance of uh, Eurozone bonds would of course resolve a lot of problems, uh, particularly from the perspective of the creditors. But I do think politically uh, the solution is not really a viable one at this point in time. Uh, Angela Merkel has recently described uh, common Eurozone bonds as exactly the wrong answer uh, to the problem, but I think what she means is it's the wrong answer politically. In fact, of course, theoretically, it would make a lot of sense and resolve a lot of problems. It, it's possible we get some form of common Eurozone issuance via a vehicle, for example, like the uh, Financial Stabilization Fund, but I do think that any broader common issuance is really very unlikely uh, at this time, despite the obvious uh, longer-term benefits uh, from a broader perspective. There are clear benefits for fiscally strapped countries, but what's the incentive for other nations stepping into this burden? Well, I guess this is exactly the problem that makes them politically less viable uh, as an option. Uh, from the perspective of the uh, stronger countries, the ones who, who really would be providing the better credit uh, to uh, back this uh, issuance, uh, the big benefit potentially would be that the risk to their financial systems from their own bank's holding of these bonds would be reduced. But I think that risk is still in the minds of the politicians and possibly the public is, is not big enough uh, to warrant uh, a, such a large political step to common Eurozone issuance. So while there are advantages to the stronger countries, I think the amount of, uh, of I guess, fiscal so sovereignty that must be gi uh, given up is still considerably too large to be considered at this point. As a currency specialist, what's your view on the future of the Euro? Well, I think clearly the future of the euro is intensely linked to the resolution to the crisis that we have in terms of eurozone debt. Uh, that being said, our own view is actually that the eurozone will hold together precisely because although we don't have a grand and instant solution like a eurozone common government bond issuance, we do have all the time as we face these increasing uh, problems, we do have policy response, we do have the stabilization fund, which is of course a brand new innovation from recent years, it's been extended, and I believe as time goes forward we will continue to have more of these steps to address immediate liquidity and the even uh, uh, solvency issues, and at the same time strong fiscal steps perhaps not always reaching exactly the right goals, but this combination of fiscal improvement and, of course, ongoing support from the centre. Together, we're increasingly ever so slowly moving towards a stronger fiscal centralization, even though we're not taking that ultimate step at this point of a common fiscal policy or common issuance. We are moving ever so slowly in that direction. And that, that by the way, I think is uh, positive for the euro in terms of stability for the medium to long term. Taking a broader perspective, how are other currency markets performing right now? Well, I think right now uh, we have really a consolidation phase. The dollar's been, uh, I guess, remarkable in its inability to benefit from the recent market instability that we've had globally. Uh, we're used to the dollar rallying when uh, other markets are really volatile, such as uh, the equity market particularly. That's been remarkably absent in this, at this time. And the euro, of course, has also held up remarkably well uh, uh, thus far. There's been some weakness uh, in some of the emerging markets, of course, and some of the commodity-related currencies have softened, but this has all been really quite moderate, reflecting quite a stable situation at current prices. There is a risk we see a little bit of dollar strength uh, in the near term, uh, driven by any ongoing instability, particularly, of course, uh, if we don't get any, any promises of new, big, uh, softer monetary policy steps from the U.S. in the near term. But generally, I think we're going to be holding quite stable ranges for the next couple of months. Let's look at the global bond and equity markets. How would you describe their performance over the past weeks? Well, I think truly dramatic in ma many cases. Uh, the bond market, for example, which I think has truly been the area of interest, 
we've seen a dramatic decline in benchmark bond yields around the world, of course, led by the US. And this has been driven by an increase uh, in fears of recession on the one hand, and then, of course, related to that, the possibility in people's minds that if you have an increase in recession probability, then the Fed ultimately may respond, and that may mean, for example, extension of the maturity of the Fed's operations in terms of adding liquidity, which would be a very depressing influence on bond yields. So you've really had a very big movement there. In the equity market, of course, you've also had tremendous volatility, a very big correction from the recent highs, considerable volatility uh, since then, and I think really quite a, an immediately uh, a still uncertain outlook. So the recent developments have really been quite dramatic. Has the downgrade of the US credit rating affected market performance at all? Uh, actually, I, I would say no, not really at all. Uh, and in fact, we recently had a, a downgrade uh, of, of Japan as well by one of the ratings agencies and equally very little, almost no impact. In fact, the yen strengthened in response to the news on the day, uh, not related to it, but just by coincidence. And you can see that the market is not attaching a lot of significance to these ratings decisions. Uh, the big rally in US US bonds uh, really occurred alongside the downgrade uh, from one of the ratings agencies. And I think that will continue to be the case. There's no doubt the market recognizes that fiscally the deterioration is there, but I think that's actually been recognized for quite a long time. And the ratings agencies to some degree are a little bit uh, behind the curve in this sense. Finally, what's the general consensus within the GESG regarding the global economic prognosis? Well, at the moment, in the global economy, we have a, de a very delicate balance. We have ongoing, very stimulative monetary policy, which, of course, is good for the outlook. We have very strong growth coming from emerging markets, uh, which, of course, has been the powerful engine uh, keeping the global economy really quite strong in the last couple of years. But against that, we have some withdrawal, uh, both today and, and prospectively, of fiscal stimulus. And you can see that uh, some of the most recent leading indicators, of course, have been quite weak, just reflecting the normal uh, to and fro of the cycle, but it raises a tremendous amount of risk at this very very delicate uh, situation. So while we view the global economic outlook still relatively constructively and have an optimistic uh, opinion that as particularly emerging markets will continue to drive global demand and there will be further rebalancing of growth, U.S. monetary policy will remain extremely stimulative. Uh, we still have issues that, you know, U.S. unemployment is still quite sticky. Uh, we have concerns, of course, that uh, within Europe, the debt crisis can affect consumer and business sentiment, and it means a very delicate balance. But generally, we think no recession and a gradually constructive outlook. Thank you, Joe. That was Joe Prendergast, Head of Currency and Commodity Strategy at Credit Suisse. For more information on current market conditions or for investment ideas, visit the website creditswiss.com markets or check out the online magazine InFocus.